Hi, welcome to Shoe Pack Sports. I'm Marty Shoe Pack, and I'm filming this in uh, August. Uh, I guess it's August 10th. And I just got back from Bristol, Connecticut. I went up. I have some uh, relatives there, but I also stopped in the regional Little League facility and watched a couple of games, which were very, very entertaining. If you are around uh, some of these regional uh, Little League centers, I urge you go and observe a game or two. It's free and, and it's fun if you love baseball, if you love youth baseball. And if you take uh, take your son and daughter there, I think they'll enjoy it. Baseball or softball. Anyway, <clears throat> this is a baseball and softball uh, practice template number three. I'm taking it right from my book, Baseball Coaching, A Guide for the Youth Parent and Coach, which I'll show you the cover later on. And uh, we have 60 practices there. Of course, in the course of a youth baseball season, you probably won't have run 60 practices, but you could pick and choose which ones you want. And I always recommend before the season, write out a master list of drills that you think you, you and your team will enjoy that will benefit them and will ultimately benefit your league and the players themselves to give them a love for baseball and softball. So you could achieve the one goal while you're, co while you're coaching. That's so they come back the following year to play again. Anyway, start every practice, as I've said numerous times, I'll go over it again, it's important, with uh, a warm up. Uh, when I first started coaching, I didn't think it was that important, but studies have shown even the shortest amount of warm up time, three to five minutes is beneficial. And also you're conditioning your team for some lifetime uh, habits. So when they work out, when either they're jogging, they're playing handball, racquetball, or tennis, they'll warm up when they're adults. You wanna get them into that habit, baseball uh, and softball, and whatever you coach too, basketball, uh, hockey, uh, soccer. I know basketball, uh, I've coached basketball. The first thing kids do when they get on the court, they go right to the three point line which I find incredible. But anyway, that's the way it is now. So we do the warm up three to five minutes. Uh, you don't have to be a kinesiology expert. You could just have them jog around the field, do some arm rotations. And then I get right into the drills right away. And this is a drill I call the cross infield drill, where I use two coaches, one between home and third, and one between home and first. Now, what I do is this, the coach between home and third will hit to the players between first and second, two lines. What I usually do is I have a couple of extra baseballs at my feet. And what this isn't showing, usually I have a player next to each coach, coach that's like the first baseman. So if you hit a ground ball, let's say to this player, he throws it to a player right here and he'll flip me the ball. After he goes, he goes to the end of the other line here, okay? While that's going on simultaneously, this coach is hitting to this line. And after he goes, he goes to the end of this line and the coach hits to this guy and he goes to the end of that line. You want to achieve movement, constant movement for your players so there's not a lot of uh, standing around, all right? And a couple of things you tell your players, if they make an error, the ball goes by them, just stay there, don't go chasing the ball, all right? Again, it's not showing it, but I usually have a player where they toss it in to that play, it's a first baseman. Very important, you have to tell the player if the coach mishits and it goes, let's say to the pitcher's mound, not to charge it because it's a safety issue. If they're charging it from this line, okay, and they're throwing it from the other line, they could get in a crossfire and get hit on the head. This is a great drill. Now, at the beginning of the season, what you might want to try to do is instead of having two lines, you combine them to one line. You do that a couple of times in practice 
And then you go to the two line situation. Works really well. Use your assistant coaches. You put a first baseman down there. So that's a, a good drill. And um, the next drill, we go to the line throw drill, which I've shown before, where I line balls up, shortstop, third base. I put two players at first base. It doesn't show to have a bucket, one first baseman, and this picture showed him too close. He's more or less over here backing up. They switch not every throw, but every like three or four throws. So this line, I'll stand over here. I'll yell, go. He'll run in, pick up the ball, throw it at first, then go to the end of the next line. Okay, and then I go to the next line and say, go. It's constant movement, constant movement. You'll know when to go to the next line. The ball doesn't have to get to first base. On the throw, you could go to the next player too. You'll become aware of if there are overthrows or any sort of mishaps and you'll know when to stop. Great drill, a lot of repetitions in a short period of time. And what you do here, if you have young players and they're at third base, you have to emphasize to them, if you can't reach first base, you could throw it on one bounce or two bounce, especially early in the season. You want to focus on accuracy. Okay, so that's another drill in this template number three. I also want to point out, just take a moment here. I put a great emphasis on players helping coaches with the equipment, carrying the equipment, helping to clean out the dugout. And what I do is I will give players additional swings and batting practice. So if we're having a batting practice with, let's say five swings, and I'll say to the player, do I owe you, do I owe you any swings? He says, yeah, coach, you owe me two. He goes, okay, I'll say take one, so you'll get six on this turn. But one of the things I wanna emphasize a, a teaching point, okay? It's more effective if you, rather than say to your team, if a player picks up the equipment bag, they'll get an extra swing. They'll all go to it, but don't say it that way. When you see a player doing something where you don't suggest they do it, and let's say it doesn't have to be picking up the equipment bag, it could be taking some garbage out of dugout, pointing that to your team. Johnny just helped clean out the dugout. He gets an extra swing. It's a tremendous technique and it's very effective. Okay, back to the template. The next drill is the overthrow the first base drill. What I do is I set up the field and this is one of those drills where coaches will just, a lot of times they'll just tell players what to do. I think you should practice it once or two, twice a year. What I'll do is, and usually the first baseman's back is turned, I'll hide a ball, somewhere foul territory, okay? And then I'll yell, go. The first baseman has to turn, get the ball. I'll have a runner at first. He'll go to second. He picks up the ball and he throws it to second with the shortstop covering second and the second baseman backing up. And what we're doing here is we're getting the, again, you wanna rotate your first baseman if you have a few players. We're getting the players used to having them locate the ball and throwing it. Remember, when you're throwing the ball to second, that play is running. So they really have to adjust their angle so the flight of the ball avoids the runner. And also, the shortstop who's catching the ball, he has to be able to see the ball without getting blocked out by the base runner. I also put in this, it's not part of this practice, but I put in a similar drill the wild pitch drill. And here I actually show where the coach puts the ball here. For the catcher, he can do it anywhere around here up to the screen. He'll yell, go. The catcher turns, locates the ball, pitcher covers home. The base runner is at third and he's running home. I usually tell the base runner ahead of time, stop like two feet before the base. I, don't, I just don't want him sliding. I don't want a possible injury situation. I want the players to see what they're doing. And we're having the 
catcher practice his toss to the pitcher and the pitcher catching the ball and putting the tag down. A lot of times the pitcher will be looking back and forth at the catcher and the runner at third. And sometimes he'll be looking and put the hand up, the ball will go right past his glove. Another technique I have also, which I've gone over this, I have the second baseman go to the base of the mound to back up. This is especially true if the bases are low to the second and third, this will save you runs, all right? But in this particular template, we're doing the uh, overthrow to first baseman uh, drill practice. Okay, next one is tagging up from third base. Now, listen, you might say, why do you have to practice this? And I'll give you an example. You don't have to practice. You could tell the players what to do. That might work. That's, that's up to you. You're the coach. I found that if you practice something, it's a lot more effective than just telling the players. Years ago, when my kids were like, uh, my boys were six and eight, we would go over to the field. My local uh, Little League had a tremendous all-star team. I mean, this team was phenomenal. And they were beating teams left and right. Finally, they played like a really tough team in the state. And on a play, there was a player at third base, a fly ball to left field. And the player at third, he led off the base. The, the guy in left field caught the ball. They went back to third, taken up and went home. He was thrown out. I had no idea why any player should lead off third base if he intends to tag up. And, and then he has to go back to third. He should stay on the base. And the coach should yell, have a signal like, okay, go or catch. And at that point, he should run home. I taught my team, I don't even want you looking at the outfield. To put your head down, you just listen to me. When a player is leading off base, what happened in our league that year, his momentum had to go back to the base. And then he had to start again his momentum home. If you are, if you have the player at third base and he's staying on the base, He's leaning forward. His momentum is only going one place to his destination, which is home plate, and he has to slide. Get in the habit of having your players slide. You don't have to practice every practice. I recommend before the season and one during the season, practice tagging up from third base. Okay, moving along in this template. Template number three. The next drill I have, and I've mentioned a ton before, is I'm a big proponent of base running. This is the base running sign drill. If you notice here, I put an extra base, second, third, and at first base. These are drop down bases. And I do this because I could divide my 12 players in half and I get more repeti uh, repetitions. I'm at third, okay? I have a coach pitching and a coach catch it. And the reason I do this, I usually use the sign to run when the ball crosses the plate to do a delayed steal or a fake delayed steal. And those are the three things I practice. Again, if you practice base running, I maintain you'll have a leg up, no pun intended, on your opposing uh, coach. You could get a potentially one to two extra runs per game if you practice base running every single practice. Okay, all right. So that's the base running side drill. Moving along, and again, what I try to do is integrate skill drills with fun drills. All right, so if that's like a skill drill, then I put in a relay drill. This is a two team relay drill where we have Teams divide in half. We have uh, buckets at home. Usually I put a cone on top. I have two coaches in the outfield with a bucket of balls, one infielder. The coach throws the ball. The first person line has to run and get it. He turns, he throws it to the infielder, turns, and he tries to knock down the buckets. The way I work this is if the player reaches the infielder on a fly ball, the team gets one point. If the infielder turns to the glove side, the team gets another point. If they knock down the cone, they get two points. 
So every turn there's a possibility of four points. After they go, the infielder uh, goes to the end of the line and the next person line moves up. It's a competition. Kids love competition. It's a great break in practice. This is the two team relay drill. Okay. And the, um, and I end practice with batting practice, which I've been through again, if you haven't seen my efficient batting practice um, video on the Shoe Pack Sports YouTube channel, please search it out. Uh, your players can get anywhere from 10 to 20 extra swings. Before I close this out, I wanna have a little bit of a bonus section, but let me have a little sip of my water. I wanna go over a few things that coaches should practice, uh, but they don't. And I learned this over the years. And um, I just find some coaches neglect certain things and other things they don't neglect. <clears throat> and you have to decide when you're coaching, why you coach, are you coaching A, because your son or daughter is on the team? B, you wanna to go to uh, Williamsport, win the Little League World Series? Or C, you want to teach players the fundamentals of baseball or softball and give them a love of the game, <coughs> excuse me, for the rest of their life. And that's really why I coached. The first few years I was trying to get to that Little League World Series, but um, one of the most rewarding parts of coaching these kids, though, was when some of your players become coaches themselves and, and they speak to you or they give you a call. I've also had players that were not good baseball players, but a couple of them became umpires. And they said they did it because they really enjoyed our practices and playing the game, which I thought was very complimentary. Now, as far as things that coaches should practice but don't, when you do fielding practice, for whatever reason, coaches take the pitchers off the pitcher's mound you have to include the pitchers for at least part of the fielding practice, all right? Too many times I've seen pitchers not know what to do with the ball. And if you love baseball, if, if you go back to the, I think it was a 2006 World Series when the uh, Cardinals beat the Detroit Tigers, just look it up. The Detroit Tigers pitchers, they made like anywhere from like four to six errors it cost them the World Series just because they even said they didn't practice fielding a lot. So I urge coaches practice fielding and use your pitchers. Another thing coaches don't practice that should is have your team practice catching a fly ball near a fence. Uh, I was in a situation, situation one time coaching where there was a pop foul and I had like my play was right there but he wasn't sure of the fence and plop. It, it just dropped like three feet away from the fence. He could have caught it, it was a sure out. Practice that, okay? I have a drill for that, but make sure you do practice that. Another thing coaches don't practice or is they don't encourage, have your players slide, okay? You want your team to have a reputation of sliding at every single base, except usually first base, obviously. This will do a lot of things. You'll get the benefit of that a lot of times on close plays, number one. Number two, you have a reputation, your team for sliding. Even at the youth level, players know this. Sometimes the defensive team gets nervous and they'll make an error even though the ball is gonna be there well ahead of the player, all right? Just because you're a little nervous of a player coming and sliding and we're not sliding in any way dirty or anything, sharpening our spikes. We're just doing fundamentally sound baseball. Get your team used to sliding. All right. The last one is fielding a wild pitch or pass ball with a runner at third. I kind of went over that Teams don't practice it. Coaches tell them what to do, but we're going to close it out. Uh, again, when I do uh, my practices and I can't find it now, you could write down the drills anywhere you want. I 
write it down on an index card. This is a blank one. I don't know what happened to the one I was using. But anyway, we usually write it down. I keep it in my pocket. I do it in pencil so it's all smudged. And um, usually I have an alternate drill I always put on the bottom. At this particular practice, I actually put like home run derby if it didn't work. But any, uh, and this is, this is a typical index card of a past practice. This is a, again, template. I think it's with number three. This all comes from the book, a baseball coach and a guide for the youth coach and parent. Again, I don't encourage generally people to buy my book, but if you are just starting out coaching, this is, I, I urge you to buy it in two formats, uh, the hard copy and also the ebook because the links are set up where they link right back to the drill, the sample practices, which is the way I would have wanted it if this book came out. So I urge you all to get this. If you can't afford it, just ask your library. Um, as far as my videos, go to your library. There's a program called Hoopla. It's one of the greatest things around. I don't get anything out of it, but they have my videos there in all my sports and you could view it right on your home computer or your home uh, smart TV. Doesn't cost you a penny. My local library, they allow you to take out like six a month. Yours might be 10, it might be four, but the program is called Hoopla. You just type in Shoepack Sports. You have access to not every one of my videos. I think about uh, 25 of them. As far as other products this week, uh, one to promote. Uh, here's one. One of my favorites, I wrote a couple of uh, young adult books, which adults read. I actually had a, a couple of CEOs of uh, major companies read it and they gave me a compliment. This is about um, a uh, character called Cliff Vermont and the title is Playoff Fever and Split Pants. If you love baseball and sports, I you'll love this. I'll put a link uh, at the bottom for uh, Playoff Fever and Split Pants. I want to thank you. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. And uh, I'm trying to keep this format going. And I'm glad you uh, watched this and, and look at the other templates. And I'll be back for Marty Shupak and Shupak Sports until next time.